Have you heard of this game, football? Yeah, they call the ball a pigskin. <laughs> I wonder if they pull it off their own hides. <laughs> Who's at the door? Y'all talking shit about America in here? Die Hard. Once a beloved 80s action movie and now a vehicle for interactions and furious debate on Twitter. Kind of like Pineapple on Pizza. That was my favorite action movie. <laughs> wait, 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 what? Ratatouille is a mecha anime? I fucking hate this website. But just like how Twitter citizens, uh, Twitter, Twittersons, will ruin your favorite movies, speedrunners will ruin your favorite games, and today, we ruined Die Hard, Nakatomi Plaza. Today, folks, we have a guest joining me. His well-renowned speedrun culture vulture, PMC Trilogy. Yeah, I'm PMC Trilogy. I do lots of Twitch streaming, mainly speedruns of action games, mech games. Armored Core has been a big thing for me recently. I also love puns and other awful garbage. Die Hard has had games before, but none that are as faithful of a rendition as Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza. Now, I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. You are John McClane, left-handed John McClane, and you're battling your way through all of the terrorists, through all of the corridors, and through all of the scenes of the movie just like any diehard super fan would want. This is a movie that I have some sentimental value for from my from my high school days. You know, this was a, a quintessential lane party movie. We would have been playing Counter-Strike for 12 hours, and then we'd settle down with a viewing of, of Die Hard. Now, I'll be honest, I've seen the movie maybe once, and doing some research on it, wow, that's a long fucking movie. What was funny about it was the usually, and this happens all the time, like like classic films that I watched as a kid and, and revisit, is I forget that like the first half hour of the film exists. And there's so much in like the first half hour before anything happens. He's on the airplane and gets the ride from the limo driver. And like, there's a lot that goes on before, you know, I think what most people think of John McClane running around in the tower. You want money? What kind of terrorists are you? Who said we were terrorists? So knowing all that, I have an important question for you. Do you think the Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza speedrun is longer or shorter than the movie? Huh? Uh-huh. It's a 50% chance you're right. And because I'm such a nice guy, I'm going to assume... You got it right! Good job! There's a juice and a cookie for you if you're in for it now. The first run of this game on speedrun.com was an hour and 13 minutes, which is about an hour shorter than the movie. But that's just the first run. If you think it stops there, you haven't been watching the series for very long. But where did this game even come from? Well, it's a 2002 PC game by Piranha Games, and I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm really thinking, I don't remember Piranhas having horns. This was their first game. You know, they were probably young men in, in the late 90s, so they adored Die Hard, of course. And they wanted to make a first-person shooter that sort of faithfully recreated that. Somewhere along the way, I think Fox uh, sent them a cease and desist. Oh! Where they're like, don't, don't do that. That's, right. that's our film. You can't yeah. do that. And then I think after a few sales pitches, they finally got a license to go ahead and make the game. I think this was a situation where it was some people who just love Die Hard, dreamed about making a video game, and they managed to persist you know, long enough. And, and they pulled it off. You know, that's honestly astounding. And that's what makes this game so much better than like the ones we've already seen on this channel, like Beverly Hills Cop or Miami Vice. They actually used the license because they just wanted to make it so much. They didn't just use the license because it's cheap and they wanted to shovel games out the door. But overall, we've got a fairly serviceable game here. I mean, I left click and I shoot and people die and that's great. That's what you want in an FPS. You do have lean left, lean right. You got sprint uh, and you have uh, brain. 
Do you have brain bar? I don't. I don't. I don't know what that is. I don't think I wrote it down anywhere. Um, let's not worry about it. Let's not. Let's not think about the brain bar. <laughs> Get it? Don't. Don't think about brain bar. <laughs> it's the galaxy brain meter. No one knows what it does. I'm not sure if I really enjoy the gunplay in this game or not, because most of the time you're using this SMG. And it doesn't sound great, first of all, but the the kickback on it makes it so inaccurate. But also, I I don't know if I hate it, because it also does the, the kickback being sort of out of control does make it feel like I'm this ramboing motherfucker that's shooting his way through Nakatomi Plaza. It's kind of it's kind of cool. Except then you use the M60 and the barrel of the gun is so long it's in the middle of your screen and the muzzle flash is so obnoxious that you can't see what you're doing. I just like the zoom in on the on the AUG in, in the way when you lean over it just you can just see past the corners of it. Oh my god. It's very good. A fair amount of levels are reused, which I guess goes in with the movie. Although, the ones they reuse usually are the more maze-like and uninspired ones. You'll hear John McClane bitch often about locked doors. Uh, locked. Locked. Owing to the spirit of the game that we discussed earlier with PMC and how they really care, they did pepper in some cute things throughout the levels, like just little textures. Uh, for example, the pasta recipe that I tried to read, but my game crashed when I jumped on the oven range. This is literally just pasta with, like, Parmesan cheese. I guess I shouldn't be getting my pasta recipes out of a 15-year-old PC game. Oh! Spectacular move. Does that happen in the movie? So this is a game I have already run before, and I got a pretty, I got a, I got a pretty okay time. You know, former, former world record holder. Yeah, you please keep, please keep your applause down. Thank you, thank you. Save it for the end. But no, because of that, I already have the knowledge, right? We already know exactly how to break down this game. And uh, let me tell you, it's um, store clipping, store clips, really, that saved the bulk of your time. Really, uh, really fun looking ones too, where you gotta just shimmy against the door until it, until it pops you to the other side. No speedrun is complete without its community, and we can certainly thank Albert Hammock for pretty much uh, finding out that you can clip through doors. But he nor anybody else had put it into a run until you guessed it came along. I had first really worked with him on Slave Zero, and it wasn't until our mutual friend Archie Archmagus brought it to my attention. He's like, "Yeah, there's a there's a diary first person shooter." Albert saw that and was like, "Oh yeah, I have tech for that." And so there was like a leaderboard with uh, with two mods, neither of whom had run the game, and then a person who did like an, uh, an like an hour long or like 50 minute or something glitchless run. And I said, "Okay, this needs crushing." <laughs> that, that is always the strongest bait for me. If you just put in a little bit of effort to cross the T's and dot the I's, you can absolutely pants everyone in the room. <laughs> right, well, when you put it like that, I'll play the game. It's amazing, though, because you wouldn't think one trick, like door clipping, would save you so much time and be so useful in so many places. I, I guess there are a lot of doors in games, right? There are several levels where a situation where the exit of the level is right next to the entrance of the level. So once you clip through that door, you're there. It's a level where you're supposed to, like some SWAT officers run up to you and you show them your badge and they're like, okay, you know, point us in the right direction. And you're supposed to go through this level, like through a swimming pool and all this stuff. But instead of doing that, you just walk past them and clip through a door and walk up some stairs and the exit to the level's there. And it's abusing that kind of circular level design with door clipping that has really made a, a huge difference in, in the amount of time that the speedrun takes. And it's not just that, of course. This is kind of a it's a kind of a tactical shooter. I say kind of because you play it on easy. As a speedrunner, you're all about this relentless charge forward. But the game is not afraid to punish you handily for being careless. In not just death, in other ways like getting stuck in the ground. Insta failing you if you shoot a SWAT or even just punishing you for exploring a bit. Against the backdrop of a Half-Life and Halo world, it would be very difficult for this game to stand out as an action FPS. Most action FPSs, uh, especially licensed ones. But this one is serviceable enough, in my opinion. It makes for an interesting enough speed run. There's a chance it's going to be at the upcoming GDQ run by the man, PMC Trilogy. And, I mean, we both agree that 
it's a serviceable game, and it's a game made with love, which, thank God, even when the credits are playing, you can kind of get that sense of, hell yeah, we, we did it, we made this game, and that's cool, and I support that. Even if I'm not sure what my gun is doing here. If you're new to Fast Bad Files, it's a series that covers the exploits of a, a group of gamers, I suppose, called the Fast Bad Society. We just come together to break old, unheard of, fertile ground in speedrunning, right? We, we not only take a deep dive into games, we also just think about ways it can be broken, destroyed, and speedrun. Sometimes they give way very easily, sometimes they never give way at all. It's just the nature of discovery. This week has been very prolific for the Fast Bad Society. Lots of work being done on Robocop, the 2003 PC game. Lots of work, lots of work being done on Project Eden right now. And I'm just watching this all happen. I haven't played either of these games yet. I myself am making no progress at all. Let me show you. None. In a couple games you'll see on the screen, uh, but if you want to help out, not just help me out with my degeneracy, but also bring your own to the table or even contribute to something that's already happened, hit me up on Twitter. We can make arrangements. Oh, yes. 